And now I have the immense pleasure of introducing our next speaker, who is Jem Young, not just an engineer, but a tall engineer. Jem works at Netflix, and things Jem loves include reading, clean code, JavaScript, clean user experiences, dogs, but apparently maybe also cats. He mentions both in his bio. So we're gonna have to find out later whether Jem is a cat or a dog person. But either way, we know that he is an empathy person. He believes that empathy is the key to good UIs. And we are going to have a real treat right now. I am so looking forward to this talk because, okay, I can't see your hands if you raise them, but just nod silently to yourself in front of your computer if you've ever experienced a bad interview, right? Yes, I can feel you all nodding. So Jem is going to take it away with a talk on why interviewing is terrible. Hello, React Rally. It is great to be back. That slide you see on the screen, that uh, handsome gentleman there, that's me five years ago. My very first conference talk ever was React Rally 2015. Who would have known after all that time? I, it, it was just the start of an incredible journey. And now I have a new job, a wife, and a baby boy. And after all that, it turns out this is where I began. Hello, my name is Jim. Today I'm here to talk to you about a crisis plaguing our community. This crisis haunts us all, gives us immense amounts of stress and causes so much undue terror when I say the words. It, this talk will be a little bit technical, so I'm gonna need you to grab a pen and a piece of paper and I'm kidding, but I am, of course, talking about the technical interview. <sighs> that specter that haunts you, it doesn't matter if you're an engineer with one day of experience or 10 years of experience, you will always be haunted by the technical interview. And why is that? Aren't we the ones giving the interviews? How did we end up here in this state where Literally, the worst thing you can do as an engineer is to have to go through a technical interview. Well, today I want to talk about that. Today I want to talk about how we got here. What's the reasoning behind why interviews are the way they are? And mainly, I'm just going to discuss why interviewing is terrible, why it's an awful experience. And like any one of my good proper rants, uh, you know, you should probably get to know me first probably get to know the guy who's going to be talking to you, going on long rants, wondering what he's all about. So, hello, my name is Jem Young. I am a senior software engineer at Netflix. In my free time, I am an instructor on front-end masters, where I have a few courses. And if you've ever taken them, you know that I have a lot of fun just teaching. I am the one of the newest and probably least productive member of TC39 but it's just an honor to be on it and to sit with such smart people. And I've already learned so much about how ECMAScript is made and the decisions that go into the, into the nuances of uh, creating ECMAScript, which, you know, just turned into JavaScript. And, and in my free time, which I have very little these days, but in my free time, I'm on a podcast called Front and Happy Hour. Uh, it's a podcast where over drinks, we talk about many front-end conversations. And just like uh, a conversation you'd have with your friends at a bar, we talk about everything from salary negotiation to interviews. And interviews are actually one of the more common topics that come up. It's one of those things that everybody has questions, whether you're experienced or inexperienced, whether you just graduated from uh, university or you graduated from a boot camp. 
we all want to know how can we be better at interviewing? How can I get noticed? How can I get a job at the bigger tech companies? How can I become a better engineer? And the answer to all these things invariably ends in a question that I repeat back to people. I, I say, well, all right, you want to be a better engineer? What is engineering? And usually people will say, well, there's front engineers, back end engineers, security engineers, mobile engineers, database engineers. And I say, yeah, 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 that, that's good. That's good. But what is engineering to you? Because if you say, I want to be a better engineer, I want to get through these interviews. And an interview is essentially measuring, are you a good enough engineer? What is engineering? If we can't answer this question, we'll never be able to put together a consistent interview because we don't know what we're looking for. My favorite answer to this question is by this guy named Joseph Gentle. And he has this theory, this theory of the three tribes of engineers. The first tribe of engineers are the scientists. They believe that engineering is all about the science and the math. The second tribe of engineers are the hackers. They believe that engineering, it's about performance. It's about getting your code to run as optimal as possible. And the third and largest tribe of engineering are the makers. They believe that engineering is all about what you make with it. Let's examine these three different groups and I'll try to understand why they all think a little bit differently and how that impacts the interview process. The first group that says, Engineering is science. Engineering is math. If you can't describe your code using grammars and expressions and figuring out if your code is complete, well, you're not a real engineer because the kind of engineering you learn getting your CS degree, that's the real engineering. It's the science, it's the math behind it. And that's what engineering is. The second group, well, they, they disagree a little bit with the first group. The second group are the hackers. Engineering is hacking. Engineering is about getting your code to run as quickly as possible, knowing all those language nuances, compiler tricks, anything you can do to get from point A to point B, that's what engineering is all about. It's about whether or not you can do something and it's about doing it as efficiently as possible. And if you don't know how to do that, well, you are not a real engineer, according to this group. The third, and largest group, the kind most of us are familiar with, are the makers. Engineering is making. Engineering is about what you can build with the code. Yes, the science and math are important, but those are just uh, side effects. Those are just the necessary requirements to get to here because it's all about what we can build. It's all about what we can do. That's what engineering is. And if you can't build something shiny and cool, well, you're not a real engineer, according to the makers. The natural result of this conflict is imposter syndrome. Our old friend never leaves you, no matter how successful you are. You feel like this because there's always these battling tribes of people that say engineering is this, engineering is that. And you see someone that is explaining something you don't understand, say some complex math, and you think, well, Maybe I'm not a real engineer because I can't write the shiniest tool and I can't build the fastest, most performant code. And I can't describe my language using scientific terms and understand how a compiler is built. And largely, this is where a lot of our imposter syndrome comes from. Looking at other people and saying, oh, well, crap, I must not be a real engineer because they're doing something I don't know how to do. That's one side effect of not knowing what engineering is and just these battling ideas about the three tribes of engineers. The second effect besides imposter syndrome is an identity crisis. Like we said earlier in the talk, interviews are designed to measure, are you a good enough engineer? Will you fit in with this company? So if you're studying for engineering exams or engineering interviews, how do you know what to study for? You have to understand what a company is made up of because some companies are made up of scientists, hackers, but largely are builders. These are companies we're familiar with. They, they build products and apps and web pages. 
but there are other companies that they're actually mainly scientists and hackers and yeah they've got a few people that make things and build things think uh something really with a lot of rigor something like nasa so when you're going into an interview you're trying to determine what you should study what specific thing you should focus on and we see little impacts of every tribe of engineering in the interview process the makers well of course they do take home exercises and live product building because what's important is about what you can make the science group says well yeah but can you solve these problems can you break these down into terms you understand and then build them up to solve these complex riddles and that's where you get things like leak code from and the third group the hackers they say well yeah, that, that's all well and good, but you got to know the algorithms. You got to know performance. You have to know how to make the most optimal code possible because that's what our company believes. That's what engineering is to us. And it's funny, we, we have this conflict where any given day, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what specific type of interview you're going to get. It could be, oh, cool, science. That means you got Jerry on a Tuesday. And Jerry loves to know, do you understand the Y Combinator and its usefulness in language? Now, if you're saying right now, I don't know what the Y Combinator is. I don't know why it's useful. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. It depends on the company. It depends on the role you're trying to apply for. Because when we take all these disparate ideas about what engineering is, these three different tribes, we put them together, we understand, actually, engineering is all of these things. We need every single group of this tribe to, we need every single person in this tribe to make engineering, to build stuff. So when we think, what is engineering? Well, it depends. It depends on which tribe you belong to. Because some tribes value what you can make. Some tribes value the math. Some tribes value the performance. And it highly depends on the company and what the company values. If the company values people who know algorithms and they say that's what makes the best engineers, well, you're going to get an interview full of algorithms. If you go to an interview at a company and they believe, no, interviewing is all about what you can build, well, you're going to get a lot of hands-on coding of real products. And we can see that's why interviews are terrible. It's because you don't know what to expect. None of us know what to expect. How can you study for a test where the answers are, or the questions are essentially random every single time? It causes a lot of stress and anxiety because we just don't know what to study. And we're smart people. We can figure this out. But what we can't handle is the randomness of it all, the arbitrary nature of some of the questions we get asked. So when we think, what is engineering? Think, what is it to you? What type of problems are you trying to solve? And then when you think really carefully on that, you understand, okay, this is the type of engineer I'm looking for because engineering is this to me. And when you can convey that to the candidate, the person that is being interviewed, well, it's a better experience for everybody because nobody wastes their time and there's a lot less stress. So that was pretty broad. What is engineering is a broad topic and engineering in general is a huge topic. So let's go to something a little more specific. How about what is front end engineering? <laughs> uh, I, I, I love this question in particular because I would, I would say front end interviews are the worst. They're, they're by far the worst. There's so much you can cover. So if we're gonna break down what is front end engineering, Let's create a new theory. We'll call it, uh, I don't know, um, the four tribes of front-end engineers. The four tribes, of course, are JavaScript, CSS, Node, and HTML, naturally. So let's look at our typical front-end engineer. A typical front-end engineer, uh, you know, they're primarily JavaScript and Node with a little bit of HTML, CSS. More of a JavaScript engineer, if you will. Funny enough, this describes my skill set. And like most of you, I suffer from imposter syndrome. And I want to know, am I a good front engineer? Is my skill set good for a typical front engineer? 
And, you know, my, my team was really supportive and positive. They, I know deep down they believe in me deeply. Uh, or it turns out maybe I'm not a typical front engineer. Maybe that's just my own bias. That's a reflection of my own experiences. Maybe your typical front engineer is heavy on the CSS and HTML, but the JavaScript and the Node, yeah, those are important, but it's really the UI and styling and creating um, animations and things like that. Maybe that's a typical front engineer. Yeah. We start to see why front end interviews in particular are the most difficult. Because half the time people are looking for a front end engineer and the other half of the time, they're looking for someone to engineer their front end. And they're two wildly different things, even though they both fall in a bucket of front end engineer. In fact, if you were to go to, um, I don't know, the person that writes job descriptions, a hiring manager, and you say, what is a list of ideal skills that I want to hire for a front end role? You'd probably get something like this. HTML expert, naturally. UX expert, naturally. JavaScript. Node, accessibility, uh, yeah. These are all right answers. But the real question is, how in the world am I supposed to study for a front-end interview? The interview can consist of any of these topics and they're all valid places to dive into. So unless we understand what kind of engineer we're trying to hire, there's no way we can make the front-end interview better. So I've shared my experience of my skill set and what I believe a front end engineer is, and that's clearly not correct. You know, I asked my team and they, they said, I'm not a good front end engineer. So uh, maybe, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's look at a real job description because maybe surely that will tell us what an engineer is. So let's look at this job description for a front end focused role. Uh, let's see. Um, Significant knowledge of front-end JavaScript libraries. Yeah, I'd say a good front engineer has pretty good knowledge of front-end libraries. Uh, what else is here? Uh, experience developing continuous integration deployment schemes. Uh, that's, that's a bit more questionable in terms of front-end. Uh, oh, there's more. MVC, C-sharp, what? Azure? I just want to emphasize this is the real job description. Get every single one of these bullet points could be its own type of engineer. Maybe these people are more looking for the unicorn full stack engineer, which in which case, here's a list of skills you probably need to be a full stack engineer. AWS, Git, Docker, CI, CD. Yeah. So the people that are doing the hiring don't have a good idea about what a front end engineer is either. So instead of the four tribes of front engineers, we should just go with the end tribes of front end engineers because the skills we have today will be wildly different from the ones we have in 10 years. And there aren't distinct tribes. But really the result of all this is an identity crisis. In our minds, we say front end engineer and we think, oh, they're a person that interface as well, and builds cool, cool UI and use the latest tools and Webpack and Angular and Ryan Florence's beard, ah. But in reality, most of our day to day, if we're being honest with ourselves, is pushing pixels around. It's closing bugs. So front end engineering is, well, it's all these things. <laughs> Interviewing is terrible because we don't agree on what engineering is. Front-end interviews are particularly terrible because we certainly don't agree on what front-end engineering is. So the question arises, how can we fix this? Now that we understand the reasoning behind why interviews are terrible, how we ended up in the state, what can we do to make it better? Well, for one, we can make interviews a little less arbitrary. We could focus on being better interviewers ourselves because that's the wild thing about all of this. We're the ones who are doing this to each other. So here are some tips for being a better interviewer. The first tip is remember the purpose of the interview. 
you're trying to answer two questions, not just about can they solve this riddle or this puzzle, but you're trying to establish, are they good to work with? Are they friendly? Do they communicate well? Do they explain themselves? Do they, do they treat each other with respect and dignity? The second question is, can their engineering skill set, skill set help solve the problems that you have? And every company has different problems. And that means the interviews are going to be a little bit different because they're looking for something specific. They're looking if you have the right combination of the JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Node, and all those other things to help solve the problems that you have. And if we go into interviews just trying to answer these two questions and not try to prove how smart we are, if we can, or if we can answer questions that are so clever that no one can answer them, not even ourselves, I think we can become better interviewers. I think we can make interviewing less terrible. The second tip is we need empathy and not sympathy. Sympathy is you went through the interview grind, you studied for months on end, you did every leak code exercise, you've read every cracking the code interview versions one through 20, and you're ready and you pass that interview and you say, thank goodness that's over. I'd never want to have to do that again in my life. And then what do you do? You turn around and you do the same thing to the next person when you're interviewing. Sympathy is, oh man, yeah, that sucks to be you. I had to do it too. I feel you. Empathy is, yeah, I remember being in that position and I remember how unpleasant it was and I don't want to do that again. This whole thing is, it's wild, this situation we've created for ourselves. We all hate interviews, but we're the ones who give them. We're the ones who ask these JavaScript trivia questions and treat people poorly and try to trick them with clever, clever riddles and code. What we need is empathy. We need to remember what it's like to be on the other side of that whiteboard. And if we remember that every time we sit down with someone, I think we'll all be better for it and we can make interviewing less terrible. And if nothing else, if you take away nothing else from this talk, just remember that hiring someone, you're changing their life. You're changing the course of their life. You're changing the trajectory. And by hiring the right person, they're going to change you too. Maybe you can learn something from them. Like my journey from React Rally 2015 to now, you just don't know where you're going to end up. And if we think about this when we're interviewing people, when we're hiring, we will just be so much better at it and we can make interviews less terrible. So to close out, I just want to ask you one question and then I'll leave you alone. Could you pass the interview at your company? Could you? If you didn't know the answers to the question, could you pass the interview at your own company? I'm going to say probably not. Most people, if I told them you had to re-interview for your job, they would be terrified. And what is that? Why are we doing this to ourselves? If we remember to what, what we're trying to do when we're hiring engineers and we remember to interview with empathy, and we remember that it's not about which tribe you belong to, and it's not about what is a better skill set, what's what makes a better front engineer. It's just about does their skill set of the person you're trying to hire, does that solve the problems that you have today? And if we remember all this every single time we go into an interview, and I know it's a lot, but I think we can do it. And I think by the end of it, we will understand why interviewing is terrible. Thank you. <sighs> Folks, oh my gosh. How, how vigorously were we all nodding that whole time, just feeling so seen? I might, I mean, wow. Great talk. Thank you so much, Jam. Um, I have some friends here that are all different types of engineers who also really enjoyed it. We feel really seen and like we belong in the industry and we're empowered to be empathetic in our future interviewing. Yay.